All right, guys, welcome to episode nine of the Gym Bro Fitness Podcast. And today I have a special guest for you guys. If you're a gym owner, if you're a business owner, if you're a real estate agent, stay tuned because this is going to be a massive, massively valuable podcast for you guys. So crank up the volume, silence all of your other notifications. If you're driving, please make sure that you're not on your phone while you're driving. Yes. But if you're at home, please also pull up our YouTube channel. We have all of our podcasts on recording for your convenience. So you guys can go over to our Jimbro Fitness uh, YouTube channel to see our, our uh, podcasts. But without further ado, Peter, thank you for hopping on. Thank you so much. And uh, first, before we get into it, um, please tell everybody a little bit about yourself, who you are, and... Um, yeah, you know? the short the short story or the, yeah, the yeah, long just, story. Just the, the short intro. I own TG the Gym Ramona, uh, which for many years was Ramona Fitness Center, and um, I bought that gym about twenty three years ago. But it's been in business since nineteen eighty nine, and uh, just after COVID, we joined forces with TG the Gym brand, which we have a number of them here in San Diego. But uh, we end up licensing the brand, and so we are TG the Gym Ramona. Guys, Peter's downplaying everything that he's talking about right now. He is a absolute savage. This man's an IFBB pro bodybuilder. He is a commercial real estate owner as well as a commercial and residential real estate uh, broker. Oh, yeah. um, and he also is a 23-year uh, running gym owner, which is just in a, in its in its own the way that you just say, casually said that is yes. is remarkable it truly is yeah. and so today I'm I, I just want to say that everybody out there listening this is going to be a great time to think about and reflect on what it is that um, you know we can gain from your experience going through all the trials and tribulations of all the different things that you've done well that's yeah that's an honor it's an honor to be here to share a little bit share my story a little bit. Um, it all started really when I was about eight years old and my dad had some dumbbells in his closet and I'm like, well, what are these? And so I started doing bicep curls and I think it kind of maybe stuck with me. My arms have always gr outgrown the Just rest didn't, of my body. Never stopped. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, both parents, my dad was a Vietnam vet who actually lost both legs in Vietnam and one eye and part of his arm. And so he had a lot of issues with pain and, uh, my mom yeah. just had a struggle. She, she kind of struggled all through her, her childhood with, um, maybe depression or self-worth. And unfortunately, both of my parents had drug and alcohol problems. So about the age of nine, maybe 10, I was very frustrated with, uh, my home life because both parents had drug and alcohol problems. You know, my mom would be in rehab during like the holidays. And so I had a lot of frustration. And as a lot of young, young men get upset, sometimes you get physical with objects like a wall or, or something. So I was yeah. punching holes in the walls and just being upset. So my mom, who was the main source of a lot of the issues, bought me a weight set, a Joe Weeder. They're the concrete uh, inside the plastic plates, wow. you know, yeah. those old style that you could get at Sears, you know, catalog. I'm dating myself a little bit. Uh, so I started with that and 10, 11 years old, I had maxed out the weight on that, which I think was like 150 pounds. So I was able to like bench press that and, you know, squat it. And, Jeez. um, yeah. So That's 11 strong. years old, my mom bought me a membership at the gym that I own now. So 11 years old, I have my membership card. Um, I'll send you a picture. Maybe you could put it on. Wow. Uh, so she bought me a membership there and I was 11. You were supposed to be 14, but I was already like five, 10, I think, or five, nine at 11 years old. And I was there every day, three hours a day working out. And I just wow. loved the gym. It gave me an outlet for all the frustrations that I had with my home life. And I just couldn't leave the place. So started working out and two, well, let's see. So I started at 11, 13 years old. I did my first bodybuilding competition, which was a John Lindsay, uh, the border States here in San Diego. That was my first competition at 13 years old. And I took second place 
out of two guys. So it's crazy. But I got a Legendary. trophy and the other guy was 17 and I was 13 and you know, I was a toothpick. What are, what were some of the comments you're getting from like people just like, if, why, well, first of all, I'm assuming most people didn't know you were 13, but let's say like somebody found out you were 13. Right. Do you remember yeah. what people said? Or just- Actually at that sh- very show, a gentleman named Lou Zwick, who is the associate producer of a show that was on ESPN called American muscle magazine. He was at that competition and he saw me. And from that point, he kind of took me under his wing and wanted me to continue competing and was going to groom me to be a Mr. Olympia. That was kind of the the game plan at 13 years old. He had a, he had a talent for spotting talent. Um, Stan McQuay was one of them. I don't know if you know who Stan McQuay is, but phenomenal physique and Lou found him. Um, He was he managed Flex Wheeler, Ronnie Coleman, a uh, number of other bodybuilders, and Paul Dillette, and uh, Lou Zwick and Robin Chang. So he gave me an opportunity uh, to sponsor me and to compete. So I competed from 13 until I was 19. And I did mostly NPC shows, except my last show at 19 was a Muscle Mania World Championships. And from 13 to 18, I think I won 10, 10 times. As wow. a teenage bodybuilder. Sure. And uh, so I took my, you know, frustrations at, at, at home and turned it into something positive. It, it was your saving grace. Oh, in a way. big time. Big time. Yeah. I think that's the case for a lot of people, honestly, you know? Oh, um, for sure. You know, I think that's, for me, it was very similar, you know? I, well, you know, in, in, in terms of like, maybe I was, I was probably older, you know, just because I didn't, my parents didn't buy me a weight set, you know? So I was just stuck to like the, the, uh, Bowflex pull up bar, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. at the end push uh, yeah, push ups, and stuff, and, which is fine too. Yeah. And then just being in the outdoors, you know, I grew up in North Carolina, so I was you know, chopping logs, wheelbarrows, just like, you know, the normal, like, just like yeah. living life things that you yes. do when you're out there. And then, um, you know, finally, whenever I had somebody teach me how to you know, work out, then it was, it was game over. You know, yeah. I was like, I, I know the feeling that you're describing where you're like, I can't leave this place is, you know, it's yeah. fun. It's like a playground. You know, It was it's a so, playground. It, it really was. And I think, you know, it wasn't to me, it wasn't like the Olympic lifting and that type of thing. It was, it was about sculpting the body. You know, I had a subscription to flex magazine and muscle and fitness and muscular development, all of those magazines. Yeah. And I would, just like the old stories, you know, I'd flip through those pages and see Tim for me back then it was Lee Haney. And then, you know, later on it was Flex Wheeler who I, who I got to working for Luzwick in television production, got to go to Flex Wheeler's house and film him at Venice beach. I mean, it was just an, an awesome experience, but it started with a, a negative that turned into a positive by taking all that energy and turning it into lifting weights and sculpting my body and, um, later I, I hung it up at 19. I did the muscle mania world championships natural. Okay. Before that I did dabble in some stuff and I do not recommend that at all. It'll mess up your body later in life. Uh, but I did finish at 19 after actually finding my mother, uh, overdosed. She died when I was 19 years old. Uh, I didn't want to let her borrow my car. She, I knew she was like going to you know, find drugs and alcohol. And I said, you know what? I'm not letting you borrow my car. She had kind of hit a low. And the next day I called to to say, Hey, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, if you need to go somewhere, I'll take you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she didn't answer. So I went over to the, where she lived and no answer at the door, got the manager and, um, found her. Unfortunately, she passed away at when I was 19 years old. And at that point I had decided I didn't know really, you know, fitness really had had given me a a place to put my energy, but I didn't have the answers of like real life questions. Like, why am I here? What is life all about? And that's when I gave my life to the Lord and decided, you know what? I'm not going to, I want to keep this bodybuilding thing positive. So I can't be using anabolics, you know, even though I was, the goal was to become Mr. Olympia. Um, And, you know, I had someone telling me that I could do it but I didn't want to take it to that extreme. Uh, so I finished with the muscle mania world championships. I took third. And what's kind of crazy is I think the guys that beat me, they weren't natural. So I was, you had to be a year natural in that competition and right. they drug tested. 
and they still do. They're, they're still around. They're just not as popular in the U.S. Um, and then I took at that point. Then I I was in college. That same year, uh, my girlfriend at the time, I drove my car. Actually, no, I, she had spring break. She came down to spring break and then she came back up. I lived up in Berkeley where she was going to school. And then I came down for spring break. And then while I was down there, I found out that when she was down, she cheated on me. And I moved all the way up there to be, be with her. So this, So I drive my car up overnight eight hours to the Bay area. I get there, try to hash it out with her. It doesn't, it doesn't work. So I like going to bed my whole life. is like, Oh, what am I doing up here? I don't even, you know, I wake up and my car is gone and I was big into my car. It was an Acura Integra. So in this time frame of about six months, I had lost my mom. I'd lost this girlfriend that I'd been in for so with so long and my, my beautiful car. And it was like, okay, now, what am I going to do with myself? And that's when I decided, you know what? I always wanted to own my own gym. I, 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 from the time I was 13 and actually the time I was 16, I decided I started working at that gym and I knew I wanted to own that gym. And, um, it really helped me focus my energy again, a negative into a positive, focus my energy to go to school, went to San Diego state, uh, majored in marketing and, I wanted to learn what do I need to do to own my own business, and that time frame. Then I really focused on that, and in the meantime, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Shana, uh, was her name, is her name. We kind of reconnected, and we ended up getting married about I don't know a year after this time frame, a year and a half after this time frame kind of go into the big story of how I got into the gym and purchasing the gym. So we end up getting married. Uh, this was when I was 21, fast forward a little bit. And we were able to buy a house back then. This is the year 2000. And we bought a little two bedroom, I mean, three bedroom, two bath house in the town of Ramona for 218,000. Now that house is worth like wow. 700 or something, 850, I don't know. So we bought a house. I was working at the gym again as a manager, and we were able to pull out some equity. I had written business plans my whole last semester of college, so I wrote a business plan to buy Ramona Fitness Center and buy the real estate as well, which was three parcels and an 8,000-square-foot building. So I shopped this business plan around to six banks and seven banks, kept getting turned down, and then the eighth bank finally sat down and chatted with me about it. I showed them my business plan, showed them that we're going to buy the real estate and was able to pull equity out of my house. So leverage my house for an $80,000 down payment on $850,000 loan to buy the building, the business that had been in business now for, what is that? Uh, 12, 12 years or so. So, I got the loan. I remember the day that the, the bank sent a letter, you've been approved for an SBA loan, $850,000. Like, oh my gosh, I'm 21 years old. Both my wife and I are 21 years old. And uh, uh, with a three-year-old that I adopted, my wife had, uh, we got married. I adopted her right after that. And Michaela is her name. I have two other children as well, Blake and Farah. So bought this gym at 21 and it's been how many years now? Well, over half 20, of my life, 20, 23. <laughs> 23 years. So, and it's been, a, it's been a lots of ups and downs. Um, you know, for the majority, it was Ramona fitness center, the original gym in Ramona. Um, I later three years after that, I decided I have a great idea. I'm a, I always wanted to, but I, I tore down the building cause I wanted something newer. It was an older building. Whoa. It was built in 1977, which is the year I was born, so 46 years ago. And I tore it to the ground, and I made some mistakes there because I didn't quite have the full permit yet, but I demoed basically the whole building. I got held up in plan check for two years. I moved all of our members to a warehouse, much like your warehouse here in, uh, this is Miramar area, but it was in Ramona. And I tore the building down, and 
three years later, we finished the building that's there now, and we built 12,000 square feet. Uh, again, had to leverage some of my own real estate to make it happen, had to sell that house to finish it up, the house that my wife and I had you know, first bought together, and um, built a, an amazing new building. And we reopened 2006 and, you know, that year, I mean, the first 10 years in business, we kept doubling, doubling, doubling. You know, when I bought it, it was doing like a, a, under $200,000 a year in business. And I think it had maybe 800 members. We now have 3000 members and, um, wow. Yeah. It's oh a, my it, goodness. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It, it, it's a, it's a solid gym that, you know, we've had to change our business model over the years to kind of accommodate what the, what the demand is and what the market is and COVID, you know, we all remember COVID and gyms being shut down. And I, I had refused to, to go with that for long term. I did it for three months, but, um, our TG brand, uh, a lot of our owners are like-minded in that we felt like we should be able to, we have the, the right to be able to operate our business if no one is getting sick and no one's getting hurt. And so, yeah, we fought against, fought against that. We, we actually sued the state, um, tried to try to make things right. A lot of restaurants joined in as well, but, uh, nothing, unfortunately it didn't go anywhere. We didn't get anything, um, out of it, but, um, it was a tough experience going through COVID. That's about is when did you start your business? We started, I mean, unofficially was right before COVID. Yeah. Uh, with the intentions uh, was to open up a gym, right? So I, I had. So again, when did you, uh, you started your business? I started unofficially, I guess, when I bought my house in El Cajon because I was working out. I was living downtown, working out of TG in Pacific Beach. Good gym. One of, <laughs> still one of my favorite gyms oh, to yeah. this place mm -hmm. or to this day. And um, so I bought the house in December of 2019. And so that's, I, I remember January of 2020, I went and looked for some gym equipment to put in my garage. And I found a guy who was selling his entire garage gym and it was 10 through 100 dumbbells an Olympic flat bench, three barbells. I still remember like everything I got that day. I got the dumbbell rack. I got some old school, like made in the USA, like just like kind of, you know, the weird, like 1990s style, like, like home gym stuff. Yeah. And it was like an adjustable bench, it like had like the two bars to, to bench with, I guess. And it yeah. was like the old school, like Arnold style bench where the bars were just narrow. super narrow. Yeah. <laughs> it was a funky thing. It was a funky yeah. bench, but it worked and it had a leg extension thing on nice, the end of it. Nice. So like, I, you know, I'm, I just bought my house. I'm like, sweet. I, I'm great. I'm, I'm set. Yes. But <laughs> me being the person that I am. Yeah which is I have a highly addictive personality on things that I just get super fascinated with. And I'm a gym guy too. So I'm like, I bought the stuff. I'm like, I want to get some better equipment here eventually. So, you know, I'm, it's now, you know, there's all this stuff about COVID and we're not working as much, you know, we're not, I was an air crewman at the time in the Navy. Uh -huh. um, and we were, you know, on the flight schedule, the, you know, the pilots and the crewmen, the maintainers, everybody was just kind of like, you know, we're just feeling it out. So we weren't flying. So I had a lot of time and I just kind of was making some emails and yeah, Facebook marketplace, Craigslist, even there were some interesting guys selling equipment back on a uh, uh, Craigslist back in the day. You know, I think that was one of the main spots that you would go is like Craigslist for used gym equipment. Right. Like, yeah. Um, and so I kind of just started going down the rabbit hole you know, right. really. And I just reached out to a ton and of you people. you were still full-time in the military. Yep. Still in yeah. active duty. And, um, you know, I, I ended up finding a guy in Victorsville who had a ton of used equipment for really, really cheap prices. You know, he was all the way out like three hour drive, but, um, I, he had some really heavy dumbbells. And then there was this other guy in the middle of nowhere by him that was selling this, um, really interesting machine that I've never seen to this day. I don't even know who makes it. It's unmarked, but it's a leg extension, leg prone curl combo. And it's got a, a pulley in the backside of it. So it's got like a low row pulley hmm. and you can curl off of it. You can do shoulders. I mean, it was, it's a literally a low, it's just a pulley on the floor. Yeah. So talk about home gym 
galore best piece of all time that I scored for $200 from this guy. It had like, like covered in dust and dirt. It had been sitting out for like years, you know, Yeah. covered in rust, fixed it all up and made it clean as a whistle. And I just, you know, I had a sick setup at this point. I spent $900 on the whole thing that I told you about earlier, the benches, the dumbbells, the barbells. And then I spent, you know, a couple extra hundred bucks and I got the whole thing set up and wow. then, um, ended up trying to like flip some pieces and some guys were like, Hey, I'm really interested in all the other stuff that you're trying to that you have in the background there. <laughs> Get him. Oh yeah. I got him. <laughs> Mosquito. Um, but yeah, so it kind of just, it, it, it was me just doing my thing as, as a, as a, as a meathead in the garage. And then, Facebook marketplace, people sell the stuff in the background and they announced the gyms were closing. And it was like, I mean, I can, I have a, like three minute long video of me just scrolling from people DMing me on Facebook marketplace for all of the stuff in the sale, but also all, all around it in the listing, you know? So it was just, it was, it was one of those things that was like, oh man, there's something going on here. So then I just felt, I just followed up with the guys that I already knew. I was like, Hey, I just need to buy more. And I was able to just like get a ton of people equipment, you know? So it started through really kind of through COVID kicked it off because of the home gym kind of explosion. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, I, I had the opportunity to buy a whole gym out and then I kind of around that time decided to buy all the equipment with like the idea of being like, all right, I'll just turn this into a gym. And then I ended up just not finding anywhere, any real estate. Cause nobody would l like lease me a space for a gym. They were like, no, you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Gyms so, are closing. What are you talking about? So I was like, wow. all right, well, I guess I got to sell this stuff or something. And it wasn't very hard to get people to buy that stuff back then. Cause everybody was trying to get some equipment. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was, it was, I was, uh, our first three months, uh, during that, I was like, why are we even talking about COVID? But those first three months, uh, I was loaning equipment out from the gym, uh, you know? And those members said, you know, just let us use a few pieces of equipment and then you can keep our dues going. I mean, you know, whatever, 45 bucks a month, $39 a month. And it didn't pay the bills, but those members were able to use some equipment. Yeah. And then for that time frame, I also started doing a bunch of um, a workout, online workouts. And it's like, just not my thing, but yeah. it had to become it because we had these, we members wanted to keep paying and help us stay in business. And so we wanted to give them something for that. So yeah. we did daily workouts at, uh, I think three classes a day. Wow. I did a, I did a online workout class. There like a virtual, be. like a yeah, zoom call. It was a Facebook live. Wow. So I did, I don't know how many That's of them I did. Um, it helped keep me in shape. <laughs> right? Definitely did. You do three of my, them a day. I did my regular workout and then I did a couple <laughs> of these. And then we also did like a Pilates did, class and like a senior class. Did, did you like, Go to the gym when it was oh, shut down. Oh, absolutely. Gym just workout partner. <laughs> yes. Use the gym all to yourself. And then we started having a few more members come, a few more members. And then, so three months after, we are like, you know, we're going to, well, they told us we could open back up. Right. And then they said, well, you can open back up, but you have to be outside. And if you know any anything about Ramona in the summer, it's like one of the hottest towns in San Diego County. It gets to, you know, 100 and I think that summer it actually got to like 113. So it's like to work out in 113 degrees in this, you know, tent, like an event tent. Yeah. It was terrible. Awful. It, I mean, people would get heat stroke if you really, they, they did it, but not very many people wanted to do that. Was, yeah. Yeah. And you know, the gym is a private business that, you know, we can screen our people when they come in, they, they were signing wave, not waivers, but they were signing like a, uh, you know, have you had a fever? Have you been around anybody? And then we had this, which I, I don't like asking all those questions. That's person, people's private medical information. Uh, we were taking their temperature with a little forehead reader right at the door. Yeah. Just so, it's I mean, weird. This is whatever we could do to get through that time frame, which it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. Actually, I basically was so close to just losing all of it. Really? I mean, months away. <laughs> Actually, I, I had, um, you know, I didn't, we haven't talked about my real estate business at all, but I had built a, a home back in 2015. Um, I had owned a couple other homes and sold that, those. And then I built a custom home in 2015, which I then sold in 2022. I think it was 2022. Um, just because, you know, it, it got so 
tight with the gym business. Yeah. You know, we lost half of our 3000 members. We went down to like 1200 members because people, you know, we weren't charging them, but when we were allowed to open back up fully, we started charging members and, but people were scared. They were afraid to come in. Not everyone, but um, you know, a lot of members, the older members, especially they just hung it up. They're like, we're not, I'm not going to work yeah. out anymore. There was so, a lot of, there was a lot of people. Um, what's the word? Um, kind of uh, criticizing you guys. I mean, for, oh for, gosh. cause, cause, yeah. cause the, the people that were refusing to close were essentially saying like, we don't care about the public safety of everybody's right. is the message that some people tried to force upon exactly. you guys. Right. And it's like, well, if we look back at it now, it's the opposite. Was it the gym owners that were, were forcing stuff down people's throats or was it, you know, the government right. that, you know, we don't know. We, we were, I mean, we were, we were the solution to the problem, which is yeah. exercise, be healthy, eat right. Yeah. And while well, they're telling people to, you know, stay, there was no, there was never any talk about exercising and eating healthy right. or taking vitamins or anything. It, it was nothing just to sort. Isolate Stay yourself. at home, yeah. isolate yourself, stay away from your friends and family and take these pharmaceuticals. <laughs> it, take this, take this, uh, poke this in your body. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, so it's, it's interesting that, you know, that you were able to still, you took a hit of half of your members, but you still were able to survive that, you know, which is, which is incredible, you right. know? Um, yeah. It was like back to basics time after that, it was just me and a couple employees. And I went back to working at the front, you know, after almost, you know, 20, well, 20 years. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, working at the front counter again, which was great. I, I love it. It's a positive environment. You know, the gym business is, there's just so many positives to it, but people are coming in, in a good mood. Most of the time, almost right. 99% of the time, people are in a good mood. They leave, they're in an even a better mood. Um, and we're, we're helping people stay in shape and get healthy. And so we, we was back to basics, um, you know, minimal staff, although we, we did hire all of our staff back with that uh, PPP program and, you know, paid people not even to work. They didn't, weren't even, we didn't need them there. We didn't right. have the members, but um, we still paid them to come back. And so it was like, yeah, like starting over again. So thankfully, yeah, we're back to, um, you know, around 3000 members or so. And then we joined, I had seen this TG brand. I didn't bring any of my logo gear, but hopefully you can throw the, the brand up there. <laughs> insert, insert logo here. Yes. The TG brand. Um, I just saw it like soon after COVID or around COVID time. I'm like, what? Well, you know, it was always Gold's Gym. It was Gold's Gym and then World's Gym Pacific Beach, you know? Right. And that, to me, is like one of the... Me you got Venice Gold's and then you got Pacific Beach Gold's or then World's, now TG Pacific Beach, which is like a phenomenal three-story gym right near the, the, the beach there, a couple miles from the beach off the, the five, five freeway. Yep. And I saw they changed to this TG brand... And then this other gym in Vista changed from a world's gym to a TG. And then a new one popped up in Chula Vista. I was like, what is up with this brand? To me, I felt like this is the next gold's gym brand. And it, even though, you know, that gold's gym logo is pretty iconic, just like your logo right here. Oh, but the gold's gym guy, you know, I think he's just deadlifting and the bald guy deadlifting. Uh, but this TG logo. To me, it's like, you know, Yellowstone was such a, a popular show. It's like a, a cattle brand. It just like, it brands into your mind, the T and then the G around it. And the gym, you know, I always thought, yeah, it'd be a great name for the gym is because everyone says, I'm going to go to the gym. Right. Somebody beat me to it. And uh, George Jackson, uh, who started that brand, who's a phenomenal gym operator. He's had 40 plus gyms all over the world. I called him up and we just connected. We spent a day together, went and looked at all the other gyms. We talked about kind of my mission, his miss mission. And we just had a lot of the same priorities, you know? And so he hadn't licensed the brand before. I brought it to his attention. Like, this is an amazing brand. I would love to be a part of it, which I never thought I would do. 
But I just thought, you know what? After COVID, it's time to shake things up a little bit and, you know, align with, with others. You can always get more done when you're in a team and you've got more people. So reaching out to him, we, we worked out an agreement to license the brand. Um, I mean, George, I've been doing this a lot my whole life. George also, his whole life, which is his life is a little longer than mine. Not much. He's a little bit older, but uh, he's got great experience. You know, why not partner with a guy like that? And all the other operators and owners, you were talking about Victorville. We've got a TG up in Victorville, um, Apple Valley, uh, Florida. I mean, there's, I think there's like, we have like 10 to 11 TG gym, the gyms now. And uh, it's a great brand. So if you, if you're out here in San Diego, come visit our, our TG brand of gyms um, or, you know, look it up online. It is uh, the hyphen gym.com. I'm pretty sure that's it. You can always just search it. Yeah. We'll link everything in the description. So you guys can find all of the, uh, all of uh, yeah. all the different, gyms. all the different gyms. Yes, sir. Credible story. Jeez. I don't even know where to, where to start with asking you a question on it, but yeah. That's, um, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll say like, well, first I just want to say this. It's, it's interesting that in, you know, times like COVID where, you know, it's a uh, panic and there's, you know, a lot of people are worried and there's, you know, uncertainty in the air. Mm-hmm. There's always those people that will rise above yeah. that can connect us. And so when other people try to bring us apart, there's always those people that will rise up and stand and stand for community and for, and for bringing those people back yeah. together. And this, you know, keep people safe and healthy. But, um, you know, I, I believe that we have a right to operate and take care of our businesses. And this is where I think the, the difference comes is when big business, big corporate business like Costco, Home Depot, Target, some of these big box businesses were allowed to stay open. Yep. Costco never closed. Neither did Home Depot or maybe, but mom and pop businesses had to shut down and the police came in and forced it. Like they, they never actually came in and told me to shut down. That's what was kind of unfortunate. And then they, they the County charged me with, you know, misdemeanors, three of them uh, or five of them. I don't even remember, but they're all dropped at this point, thankfully. But it, it, there was, something strange going on when these big corporate businesses were allowed to stay open, but not the, not the mom and pop businesses. Yeah. There was something wrong that to me, that didn't, that didn't line up yeah. and I'm it sure, wasn't right. And I'm sure. There's a lot of, a lot of other gym owners out there that experienced it like very similar things and feelings over the last couple of years. So guys, if you're, if you're a gym owner listening in on, on our, uh, YouTube, drop a comment below, drop, tell us your story uh, about COVID and how you guys made it through. I'd love to hear, Yeah, love to hear some of those stories in, in the comments and uh, read those, check them out. But, um, you know, I, I, ju- I just think that um, even though, you know, we were forced upon by the government a certain way, you know, we still had people bringing everybody together in, in our own unique ways. You know, for me, it was, I wanted to just try to help people get the equipment at home without getting in trouble of going to you know, yeah. let's say a gym, if they were scared or if just wanted to build right. a gym in your house, you know, cause it's Absolutely. a great feeling to have that, that equipment in your, in your garage or your shed, whatever it might be your basement mm-hmm. and uh, be able to get a workout in whenever you want. So, um, you know, I, I guess, um, thank you for telling me the story. I mean, telling us the story, it was fantastic. I mean, I'm sure that's not even like, it would take, you know, I'm sure a lot longer to tell the more details and a lot of yeah. uh, things that, you know, I want to talk about in that. Uh, but I guess the first thing I'll say is if you could go back to being that 19 year old self, you know, mm-hmm. your, your mother just passed your car stolen, you know, your girlfriend just cheated on you mm-hmm. and you know, you're in, you're in school, right? Like if you're that kid, what would, what, what would you, what would you tell him now if you could talk to him? Okay. Yeah, that's a, wow. That's a, that's a deep one. Um, well, I wouldn't change too much, but what I would say is don't take on 
too much debt that will weigh you down that doesn't give you a benefit in your business. Like obviously you can lever like I mean, I leveraged my first home to get this down payment. Right. Then, you know, so leveraging like that and debt like that is is important. But buying a fancy car, buying a toys and an RV and weighing yourself down where you've got you're a slave to that debt is not a good idea. Yeah. So thankfully, I mean I'm 100% debt free except for my gym building, but I have taken on, you know, buying a new car every 3 years. Like that is ridiculous. Unless you own a home, well, which is very challenging nowadays being a real estate broker is it's a challenge. But those rates are high. Be, you shouldn't be they are. But as soon as they go down, the prices of homes are going to continue to go up. So another advice is if you can buy a home now, you should buy a home now. It don't wait because it's not going to get any, unless there's a World War III and there's a huge economic crash, which some people think there's going to be, but they've been talking about that for, for years now, the bubble that's going to bust. But I would, that, would, that would be the biggest thing is don't take on um, debt that isn't going to help you. Okay. And don't buy new cars you know, buy a used car. Like, I'm sorry, you don't deserve a new car if you can't afford it. Like you got to make payments for seven years. Like that's not a good plan. Don't yeah. do that. Buy a home when you can. And, um, just, I tell my son, my, my kids, my, my oldest is 26. She's finishing college next month with her business and marketing degree. Nice. Uh, my son is 19. He's working as a, a apprentice electrician. And my youngest daughter, Farah, is 16, and she's already in her third year of college. She's super, super smart. But what I was going to say is, like, again, don't take on the debt, but live your dream. And that's what I've always tried to do. I don't do I'm not doing this for the money. I didn't do the gym because I thought I was going to make millions of dollars. No. I didn't do real estate because I thought, oh, I'm going to make a ton of money. I love doing it. I love, you know, helping people. I love the business side of it. So whatever you do, do what you love because then you won't ever work a day in your life. So that's the biggest advice. And I've always tried to do that myself. But for the young people out there, yes, you got to you got to support your family. You got to make a living, but do what you love to do. And, um, maybe you don't do it full time. Maybe you do that part time and you pay the bills, but you got to have some aspect of passion in your life. Absolutely. I agree. Yep. 1000% on that. So you mentioned that you leveraged real estate quite a bit in terms of growing your gym business. Yes. I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. Okay. So let's say that in my case, right, I own a house and, um, you know, it has some equity in it. How would I, let's say, use that equity to fund or finance a gym buyout or a gym build out? Absolutely. In, 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 let's say, you know, state of California. So you can do a home equity line of credit. Actually, I was just talking, we have an in-house lender uh, through a company called Loan Town. And so you would do a home equity line of credit and you can, there's some lines of credit. I just asked her today. I mean, you can borrow up to 95% of your loan to value. So, I mean, you can go almost to the whole value of the house uh, in your equity. You can pull that out. So let's say you, you know, you bought a house in 2019, let's just say it was, you bought it for 500,000. And now four, five years later, that sucker is worth probably close to a million dollars. And you paid 400,000 down, you got $600,000 in equity. Now you can't, you're not going to borrow all that equity, but even if you borrowed half of that equity, $300,000 could get you in. I actually paid for Ramona fitness center, the the business itself. I think I paid 190,000, um, you know, buying, you know, the equipment and then the members and their membership agreements. And so you, you absolutely could. Yeah. So first thing is talk to a good lender. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of ways. What I have always thought is that, the money isn't really the issue. It's a, do you want to do it? You can find the money. You know, you can find investors. In fact, nowadays you could do like crowdfunding like crazy and people, and it's not my way of wanting to, uh, cause I'm old, I guess I'm almost 50, but it seems weird. Like you're just going to put it out and people are going to give you money and 
I mean, it's an investment, but sometimes people will even, I think there was a young uh, gym, gym guy in my town that in order to get his gym off the ground, it was a smaller little studio. He just had people do like a GoFundMe, which I mean, crazy that people do that, but if you got enough followers and they're all giving you a dollar and you've got a million followers, my gosh, <laughs> million dollars. So lots of different ways, but don't ever let the money hold you back. Like you can find a way. So you can uh, pull out equity. It sounds like uh, what, like, what would you say is uh, like, what, let's say if I refinance on that home, you know, equity line of credit, like what is my monthly like mortgage going to look like afterwards? Or like, right. how does that part work? Or like, so let's just say, just cause I had this number in my head, you, you, you borrowed, um, I think uh, $500,000 and it depends on the interest rate. You can do a mortgage calculator, but an equity line of credit, you're looking at anywhere from probably seven to 12% nowadays. What, what's a credit score that you should reasonably expect to have to be able to use something like this? At least 700 or more. 700 or yeah. higher. Yeah. What if yeah. my credit's like 600 to like mm -hmm. 650? So we got to fix that. So you got to start paying down some of these, you know, revolving credit, right? Uh, you know, always pay on time, but pay down your, pay down your debt, pay down the credit card, Cl debts. close some of those uh, credit cards that are, that are not, you know, you're not really using, they're just sitting there yep. and they charge you a fee each month, close those ones down. Uh, a great way uh, to work on your debt is a, is something called financial peace university, a guy named Dave Ramsey. Uh, you just go to RamseySolutions.com. And that's actually a class that I yep. taught a couple of times, financial piece. Oh, interesting. It, yeah. It just teaches you just how to get rid of your debt. And some people, that's where I say, don't buy a new car. That's kind of where that comes from. Um, you know, just if a car is not an asset, you're going to buy this car. It instantly loses value. Right. And it costs you money to, to upkeep. So if you think a car is an asset, you're wrong. It's a liability. And some people will say a home is a liability as well. But at the rate that they appreciate, it's it's a pretty dang good investment. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> no, that's awesome. So, all right. So let's say I don't like, let's say I don't own a house. What are some other ways that let's say if you had to start all over again, you would start to, you would use to like raise capital to start a gym? Well, your job, number one, you know, okay. you got to work. So don't spend everything you make. Don't spend you everything know? you make. Put some of that, that money aside. If you got to live with family, live with family. I mean, my first, let's say 18 until I was 21, I lived in a couple like little like studios here and there, but I lived at home. I live with my aunt and uncle actually, who, who raised me from 15 on because my parents were again, a mess, but, um, you know, live with family and put some money away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just. It's not easy, but if, if you really are passionate about it and you, you've got a game plan, like you got to be disciplined yeah. and that's what I love. I've always loved about fitness and the gym and bodybuilding is it creates a structure for your life and, and, it, and it helps you create that discipline. Like it doesn't matter if you don't want to do legs today, it's leg day. You know, these are the meals that you're going to eat and just have that structure. And I think it, to me, that always helped me feel like I was in more control actually of what my life was doing. So have a game plan for your life, set some goals, write it down. I wrote it down at 13 years old that I'm going to own Ramona fitness center one day. Wow. Wrote, wrote it down. I told my friends, I told people I'm going to own this gym one day. And I treated it like I was going to own it. There was this one guy, he was like the top wrestler in our school. And he came into the gym and he spit on the floor. I didn't, I just worked there, but I'm like, Hey, you can't spit on the floor. So I grabbed his hat that was on the bench and I spit in his hat. I'm like, how do you like that? You know, don't spit in here. So that probably don't recommend that unless you really, unless you're recording and you can make a great YouTube video out of it. Then and you'll end up on Joey Swole's oh, Instagram no. page. <laughs> Actually, we, our gym ended up on that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my gosh. This young lady who's a sweet young lady. She's a mountain bike rider. I don't want to bring it up, but it went viral. This young older gentleman kicked a heavy bag and she kind of made fun of him. And, it, and then she just got tore apart. Oh no. <laughs> she shouldn't have done it. And she apologized to me, apologized to the member, but man, it went on for months. Like, uh, people would text me, 
hey, this is your gym. What are you allowing in your gym? It's like, oh my gosh, oh, these are man. members. You know, she apologized. Like, oh, that's funny. I did not know that before did I said that. No, I seen that. Oh, oh maybe I did, but I didn't know it was your saw. gym. Yeah, that's funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. We do not allow that kind of thing. We, <laughs> ah, gosh. But uh, anyway, people make mistakes. That's, yeah, definitely. Um, so it's all about that that gym culture, right? Keeping yep. it keeping it family friendly and everything Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. That's awesome. So, all right, cool. So I like that, you know, so if you're, if you're trying to open up a gym, you got to build your credit score first and foremost, got to have a decent credit score, try to save your money, sit, you know, yeah. you know, stay at home with the family might have to put the ego back a little bit for a couple of years, but you know, it's all temporary. You know, I think Absolutely. that's the way I think about it. Right. Like look at the big picture. I'd also, if you are interested in doing a gym, here's what I would do different. I wouldn't do the gym, like a gym that I have, which is, you know, when I, I bought it and then a couple years later I needed to replace all my cardio equipment and that stuff is expensive, especially when you have all the TVs and I, we put those on like first, one of the first gyms to do it. You're spending six figures in cardio equipment. I think I spent $180,000. My goodness. Yes. That's a big payment each month if you don't have that amount. And then strength equipment, I think we spent... 75,000. So, you know, six, five years, six years after purchasing the gym, I reinvested $250,000 in new equipment and, you know, it's going to last you a good amount of time, Yeah, you know, seven years, maybe the strength's going to last longer. You got to keep a gym clean too. Got to keep clean, clean, clean. Um, but you don't necessarily, if you're interested in fitness and you want to have a fitness business, here's the model that I would do. I would do maybe two to 3,500 square feet. That's it. That's all you need. I would do pieces of equipment that can do multiple different exercises on one piece of equipment. I would do treadmills that are like the Woodway treadmills that don't have a motor that are running. Interesting. Okay. And I would do like, um, rowers, not, not necessarily doing a CrossFit gym, but some of that kind of equipment, like, a um, low maintenance, low maintenance, no electronic, like, no, yeah, yeah, no electronic motors. And I would do more of a training group training facility rather than a full blown gym. You can, but still offer membership, but off really focus on customer service, personal training and go that route because you can, you per square foot, I think you can earn a lot more money than doing like renting equipment. That's really what our yeah. gym is. Most gyms, you know, that you go to, you're renting the equipment and you're competing against, you know, choose at nine ninety nine or whatever. You do not have to compete on price. So you need to compete on the experience, but I would do a smaller facility that is more personal training based. One, you can pay your trainers more, your staff more because they're personal trainers and they're going to earn higher. So you're going to keep them longer. Um, and I think you can earn, you can easily make six figures in either profit or your pay. No problem doing a facility like that. And maybe you don't own the building, but it's not, you know, huge square footage that you're paying fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a month on. Maybe your rent, you know, a dollar a foot in in like an industrial park area would be phenomenal. Dollar fifty. Some places in different parts of the, the country are going to be even less. They're going to be fifty cents a foot. But that's what I would do. I would do a different different model. Now, if you've got the capital and you can do it, I think a fifteen thousand square foot facility is like a really nice size gym that you can offer like the standard, like whole circuit of equipment. I love your guys's plate loaded equipment. I mean, you know, hammer strength came out back in the like nineties and it was like revolutionary, but it's like, wait a minute, you just took the weights off and the cables and you added, I mean, crazy how, yeah. how that less investment in this equipment in terms of the manufacturer, but the, I mean, the movements are awesome but they're charging more. So I think that your plate loaded equipment, phenomenal. I mean, Thank I have you. some hammer strength, but I have a lot of your plate loaded. Um, is that, you know, plate loaded leverage? What do we call it? Yeah. Plate loaded. Okay. Good. <laughs> plate loaded. Um, we call the uh, weight stacks like the selectorized. Selectorized. That's still the same. That's still the same. So I would do the plate loaded, a line of selectorized and, you know, 
Cardio, again, is just not, that's not where it's at anymore. You know, back in the 80s, it was all about hopping on the treadmill, hopping on the bike, and then it became spin bikes. And I think because women want it to look slender. Now women want to look. Yes, I agree. A little, it, bit, it has a little bit more athletic. Athletic. That's a good term. Very. Yeah. And so, and the benefits in my, I've always said as I've been a personal trainer since I was 16, but secret weapon to weight loss and lower body fat is weight training. You're going to increase your metabolism. Yep. You're going to burn more. You're going to burn calories while you do it, but then you're going to burn calories after you're done. And you're going to increase your metabolism just at rest by adding more lean body mass. So, you know, I, I can eat somewhere around 4,000 calories a day and maintain my weight. I think that's where the, um, the confusion is though. It's like you do weight training. Oh, my weight on the scale isn't going down because you're putting on muscle mass. That's weighing more than the fat. So there's like a, you know, Oh, I'm not making progress because of the scale not going down. And then they don't see it through long enough to see that. Oh wait, maybe I'm actually just making changes that I can't see right away. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? We'll have um, DEXA body, I think they're called now. You do a DEXA scan. Yeah. We'll have them up every few months, uh, but also just doing like the Omron or the, the, in the body scale, scan. in body scan. Which doing we're partners that. with now, by the way. Oh, sweet. And awesome. We're partners with in body scan. In, in body be- is great. We have one of those. And I, I would, that's what I would recommend. Like, yeah, your, your scale number is important, but really your lean body mass and your fat mass, that's what you want. Yeah. And don't, I just say, don't get attached to those numbers. They do not represent who you are, but you need to know that information. It's just like having a business and not knowing your numbers or having like, you want to save money, but you don't know how much money is in your bank account. Right. Well, you want to lose body fat, but you don't know how much body fat you have. Like you need to know those numbers in order to decide, okay, is this what, what I'm doing today? Is it helping? No. Okay. Well, I got to tweak this a little bit. Like yeah. you, you can't wait till the end of the week to check your, your numbers and then make a correction. I, I couldn't agree more with you on that. And if you can't afford a DEXA body scan, then at the very least, just take out a tape measure and, and, oh, absolutely. and, 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 you know, measure, measure your waist, measure your legs, like do, do, all, do everywhere, you know, and, and you can literally, and just track it. Like, that's what I do. I have a, I have a, a it's actually a, a tape measure that's specifically measured for like measuring bodies. Yeah. So it's got like a retractor oh, on yes. it. So like you can wrap it around like an arm or something and click it. And it's yep. just like, you know, so I like do that every couple months, like every quarter. And then I just track, okay. You know, for me, it's like, I want to gain size. So I'm going to track how big, how much, how did I gain in my chest? Or is my left leg, my left quad bigger than my right, which I do have deficiencies like in my biceps, my left biceps bigger oh, than yeah. my right. Yeah. By a lot. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Cause I'm, I'm right side dominant. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on with that, but interesting. Uh, yeah. I mean, it happens. I, for that kind of thing, I always just say, you know, do an extra set per exercise or always start with that arm and oh yeah, okay. with that arm, if you know, okay. do an alternating. Yeah, I'm going to have to but, do that. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's lots of different ways to check your progress. What, just like, photos. But just what you just said right there, right? Like, I can now address the deficiencies in my body because I know. If I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know. But I do... I, and a lot of times it's with the ladies, like they don't want to weigh themselves like that. That's fine. But you got to have some means of monitoring your, Absolutely. your progress or yeah. your lack of progress. Yeah. And don't get attached to the number. Yeah. It doesn't that's, say anything about who you that's, are. That's see, but that, so I think that this concept though, what we're talking about is generally becoming more well known, I think is terms of like the weight training aspect of it. And so, yeah, you're right. These gyms that are, they're clearing out the cardio sections and turning those into power lifting sections oh, yeah. or Olympic weightlifting center, like platforms or CrossFit or group fitness, you know, or yes. functional fitness spaces, because there's so much more use case for that, you know, that, uh, amount like of space. space, you know, well, it actually, it, it reminds me, you know, I bought my gym back in, basically 2000 in the era before that in the, the eighties was a lot of racquetball gyms. Mm. And so a racquetball court is 20 by 40. I think it's 20 by 40. So you got 800 square feet and then you cut that and put a second floor because they're 20 feet tall, a second floor. And now you've got 1600 square feet where you, instead of 
two people in 800 square feet, or you could do doubles and play four people. Now you can fit 20 people in there. Yeah. So in terms of the gym business, that's, you know, uh, you got to maximize your square footage, which in my 12,000 square feet up in Ramona, we've tried to maximize what we have there. Um, and it's, it's been constantly about every, you need to reinvent your gym business every five to seven years. So oh, interesting, not completely reinvent it, but you got to do something to shake yeah. it up. You know, you're going to either paint everything a different color. You're going to, you know, put new flooring or new equipment. You got to change something. So, and I'm, I'm due for it right now. We did it in 2018. We painted all new colors and then we did change the brand in 2021 but now it's, you know, we're getting pretty close now. We need yeah. to start I, painting. I love coming out to your gym though. Yeah. Thank it, you. It's, it's a blast. Cause you know, I, I like to take my motorcycle out and I'll cruise through the Hills and, you know, end up kind of like flowing through the, the mountains back down to Ramona into like on my way back into town. Yes. And, uh, you know, the gas station's right there. Yeah, your gym's that's right. Like, you just poke your head in there. Yeah. I usually or, like, yeah. Or like, you know, next time I'll get a lift in. Yeah. Yep. For yeah, sure. So. Actually. Yeah. We just did, uh, 24 hours. Uh, Monday through Friday, uh, starting February, this, this February, 2024. Wow. So, uh, weekends were open 6 AM to 11. Uh, but Monday through Friday we're 24 hours. That's incredible. So with that change, have you had to implement any new systems, technology oh, or absolutely. key fobs? Like how does that work? Yeah. Key fobs, door access. So we still staff it during that time frame. for now. We're still staffing it. Um, so there's somebody at the front counter and their, their main thing also is to make sure they do a lot of cleaning because it's slower. Okay. It's yeah. not as many people. Uh, but then you also have a key code or a, a little key fob access or a key card Got access. It. And so that was not a huge investment there, but we also did have to add, uh, we had to double our number of cameras. Um, Understand. And what's great nowadays. I mean, there's lots of like, I have a Schwan, older Schwann video system. But you also can do the ring cameras are amazing, you know, and you can do them where you don't charge them. You can keep them plugged in. Right. You know, and electrician can, can do that very simply by putting an outlet up next to it or a receptacle, but ring cameras are, are great. To, I mean, you can, I can check right now and see what's going on and it gives you the alerts, the same ones you have in your home, but you can do those at the house. I mean, at, at the, the gym. gym. Yeah. Or, or any business you have, so, I mean, they're great. So interesting. Is that something that um, was requested a lot by the members? Was it like, okay, the hours wasn't working for, for the members? Or is it just something that you're kind of like taking the initiative on and saying like, hey guys, you know, you guys, thanks for the support. And now we're going to be 24 hours. Or is it more of a tactical play where it's like, hey, you know, this gym is offering this and this is how we're going to level the playing field. It's a little bit of both. Um, I did chat with George, uh, Jackson owner of, uh, Pacific beach and the, some of the others. And I wanted to see what their kind of game plan and what they've been doing because they do a 24 cool. hour also Monday through Friday. Oh, really? Um, I'm not sure if all of them are that I know Chula Vista is, and I think Vista, um, PB, I don't think is, I could be wrong though. Um, so I chatted with them just to see, you know, and I wanted to kind of be, what, you know, we're, we're the same brand. So we want to offer very similar hours. It doesn't have to be. And also if anybody is interested in joining our TG brand, please reach out. Uh, we are looking to expand the brand. So, and it's a great, it's a great family um, of gym operators. Where so, can people uh, reach out to you for, for that? If they want to. Yeah, you can or, reach me. I mean, this is my real estate. It's my cell phone, but uh, seven, six, zero, seven, eight, eight, sell, like sell your house. That's my phone number. It's seven, three, five, five. And you can reach out to me and I can connect you and, and give you a, the lowdown on the licensing and how that works. And it's surprisingly very affordable. It's not something that, you know, we're trying to, you know, get in your, into your profits at all. Really. It's not, there's no monthly fee. I mean, you, you possibly could do it monthly, but it's just an annual licensing fee, not a franchise. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of the hours, uh, yes, competitive. We do have another gym that's open 24 hours, key, key fob, not staffed Got it. In, in our town. So we wanted to be competitive with that. But we also had requests from members. Okay. Um, you know, we probably looking at the numbers, we probably, you know, could close like at 1130 and open at three. But it's like three hours difference, you know, just have yeah. somebody there. 
Um, and one thing I do like about it, and you know, no issues with the morning person not showing up because there's someone's already there. So does that happen? Has it happened it's, a lot? Oh, over 20 years, it's happened a handful of yeah, times, got, yeah. which is a handful too many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah, um, that's that's interesting. So I like what you said earlier about like you thought about an idea and you had kind of run it by George and the rest of the guys. So you have sounds like a group of guys you kind of pick their brains with, which I mean, how valuable is that to have that in your back pocket now? Oh, it's, I think it's very valuable. Although, you know, if, if one is very comfortable operating their business, how they want, then they can do that. But if you want the advice or want to bounce an idea off, or, you know, I just had an insurance renewal. I talked to George. I'm like, Hey, what's going on with your renewals on your insurance? Yeah. You know, California insurance is, is ridiculous in any, anything homes and com- insurance companies are checking out of here. I think a lot of businesses are checking out of California, but, uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a great thing. We actually just had a Christmas get together at La Costa. I mean, it was amazing, uh, for all of the TG gems. Uh, we got together, had, had dinner and got to meet all the other owners, um, we launched a, a new, um, pre-workout. So we do have our own line of supplements. We have a branch chain amino acids, a vitamin fat burner, pre-workout, um, some really good stuff, good tasting, um, supplements. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. One of, one of my favorite things that you guys have is the, uh, hoodies. Oh yes. The yeah. TG hoodies go I mean, hard. There's, yeah. There's one of our operators, uh, up in Victorville. I mean, he's, he's crazy for the apparel. I mean, he does some amazing stuff. Yeah. It's like, dang, man, the backpacks. I mean, just just left and right. It's great. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We got to step our apparel game up. Yeah, yeah. We got a. Uh, we got my dad making these subliminal sub, subliminated shirts. So he he gave he gave me this one that he designed himself. That's cool. So I, yeah, I rock yeah. it. It's like all right. You know, <laughs> we have some other shirts. I'm actually going to give you one uh, after this. Beautiful, um, beautiful. But medium, extra medium. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I love it. Um, so cool. So what, what going from a privately owned gym before as Ramona fitness to now being a part of a group of guys, I guess that's what I was getting at earlier is how does, how do you feel like that transition has been for you? And what if, what would you tell somebody that's like maybe considering, all right, should I go the private route or should I go a franchise route? Yeah. Well, one, I think your vision of your brand and what you're trying to accomplish with it, you know, are you trying to be an upscale personal training? Are you trying to be a serious, um, you know, competitor gym? Are you trying to be a, just a family gym? I mean, my gym is more on the family side, although we start, we, we have on the wall, the competitors, that are members of our gym, just like in Pacific beach. Uh, it's like hundreds of, of, uh, pictures of the members that are competitors. And we're starting to add basically every couple months, we add a new photo up and it's inspiring other people to do it. Uh, but overall we're more of a mom and pop, not mom and pop, we're more of a family gym, but it's becoming a little bit more serious with the brand. Yeah. Um, so I also think if you, you, you don't c- quite have a, a direction, uh, it would be good to chat with the TG partners and the T- TG brand. Uh, again, like, don't get me wrong. It is more of a serious fitness brand, which yeah. I really like that image as well. Before I ran more of a upscale uh, personal training, higher dollar per month, which we also do have through the TG brand. With TG uh, well-being and like our more of the like VIP membership. Got if you it. go in Chula Vista, we, there's a special training uh, area for those members. Um, so you can kind of, you can go off both of those. A lot of gyms are doing that. It seems like now having that like exclusive access to, let's say like recovery rooms or like extra having like a base level package and then having like higher, yes. higher tiers above that. Yes. You know, one thing in the gym biz that uh, if you've been in the gym business or, you know, researched it all, Thomas Plummer is an amazing business coach that I reached out to when I first started. He's semi-retired, but there's some great books 
out there that he's written the business of fitness and uh, the financial side of fitness. Uh, they're pretty good sized books. And those were very useful in learning how I wanted to operate my business, you know, how you want to roll out um, maybe even a price increase or what um, billing companies to use. Interesting. Um, also, you know, multiple profit centers, MPCs, those are like having different areas in your business that earn income. Uh, a big one is like cooler drinks, very passive. People get on these and they really like them and they buy one every time they work out. Yeah. Okay. There's those, we have a smoothie bar, a city blends. Well, it's, it's, it's done by city blends, but it's TG cafe. Uh, but having a, like a, a smoothie bar or, you know, coffee, espresso kind of thing, but you gotta, you gotta, it, it, it can get sometimes I think too much. So you want to find the right system that you can do it effectively in a gym environment. Yeah. Um, so we utilize a company called city blends cafe, city blends cafe. And they're interesting. They're, you know, sweetened with stevia. Um, you know, each shake is a protein based shake. So it's not like you're having, and I've owned multiple smoothie bars where you have fresh or even organic fruit. Uh, but this is a different model. We're using uh, protein as the base, and then you have a pureed fruit uh, that's shelf stable and tastes great. It's really a protein shake. It's not really like, you know, it's not a fresh fruit smoothie. It's more of a protein shake. Makes sense. And But they're fantastic. We have ones that are from 300 calories to 1,200 calories each. Yep. Um, so something like that. You've got, um, I think, massage and body work can go hand in hand with the gym business. So if you have an area that you can do, you can hire a great massage therapist, which we have one Kristen at our gym that does uh, deep tissue and cupping. I've had acu an acupuncturist there. I've had a chiropractor. So those are some options, uh, but personal training should be a big one. Um, per and you can do personal training where they're independent contractors, or if you want to have more control, you can have them be employees and so they're running the system that you want. Uh, there's supplements, which is tough nowadays. You know, Amazon puts everybody out of business, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but people will, people do want to give you business to a local business. So, yeah. but you got to have what they're looking for. So having some of those supplements available, we have a pretty good selection. Um, what else? Recovery tools are great. Um, foam rollers, massage guns, uh, myofascial release balls that you roll on. Yeah. You that guys, kind of stuff. Do people ask you for like knee sleeves and belts and, and gloves yeah, and stuff yeah. like that? I, I utilize, um, chic, I think is how you say it. <laughs> chic is the brand. Yeah. They're, they're more of like a powerlifting brand. I Got really it. like their oh, okay. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of a silver logo. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Straps, wraps, yeah, knee wraps, stuff. um, gloves, gloves used to be we, so popular, but we no. get a lot of people asking us if we sell that stuff. Yeah. Surprisingly, which I would uh, get an account with them. They're great. Yeah. She, you can get you a, you know, wholesale account and then, but, um, yeah. but yeah, that's interesting. So what else is there? I mean, tanning, we have spray tan and regular tanning bed. We also have hydro massage at our gym for 34 99. You get tanning bed and hydro massage included in the basic membership. Wow. Yeah. And then if you want to upgrade to spray tan, we have that, or you can upgrade to a group training membership where you've got, like we call it fuel 50. It is a uh, functional 50 minutes of uh, high intensity strength training and hit training as well. So that's, we have that three times a day. So there's just different options for that type of thing. Used to be, you know, step class, spin class, um, you know, core yeah. and more that kind of thing. But um, things have changed a little bit and people, people do want to do strength training, you yeah. know, that's what they see online. And yeah. so we definitely offer Did, that a big part of that, that room that we converted into the power room That's for right. you, that, that was a group fitness room, right? If, yes. if I'm like a, it's like, still a group like fitness class. room. Yeah. But we did, it was a hardwood floor, you know, your trip traditional aerobics room, right? Yes. That's yeah. the word. That's yes, aerobics yeah. room. Yeah. It was steps and that kind of stuff, which, uh, we phased a little bit of that out, but, um, but it also doubles as a great room. We have, um, four or five racks up there, yep. squat racks. So that doubles as a great place to do strength training when there's no class. So just again, maximizing your square footage. We have a, yeah. a, a line of turf that we got through you guys right down the middle and it's been 
three years, it's held up great. Um, and Love then new rubber floor in there. And so, yeah, it looks really good. I love yeah, what you did with that space. Yeah. It works out really yeah. well. You made it sound like earlier you did, you were like, ah, oh, we did something in 2018. You've been, you've been putting I, money. I, into gosh, it. I, f- I forget sometimes, but yeah, yeah we've, we're constantly, yeah. and you know what members, but the thing is members also forget. Yes, so sometimes do. you just got to, you know, throw some new paint on the walls. Yeah. One thing I will say to gym operators that I think is super important is get touch up paint. Don't let your walls get nicks and chips. Touch it up. You don't have to like fully patch it with, um, you know, patch. Yeah. But joint at least touch it up. Like yeah. having nicks and and scratches on your walls or plates yeah. that make marks. I'd say even, clean that up. Even yeah. I, honestly though, like getting joint compound to fix holes is like really easy to you, do. One just day watch you do YouTube. all that. Yeah, it takes you so like once you do it, it's yeah. like you're like man, I should have just done this. You could do that in the morning and then the evening. Paint touch it up. It all yeah. Up. You know, you gotta sand it, gotta sand it down. Sand it down, otherwise it's gonna look a little different. But I I would recommend all the gym owners out there like clean up your walls. It's yeah, I mean (laughs) it's one of that's definitely and doing this in the last, you know, couple years, it's going to so many gyms, you know, you can just see that the gym owners that care, it's the little things. And the ones that don't, yep, kind of just don't pay the you know, machines are dirty, stuff is broken. Yep. There's holes in the drywall. Yep. There's holes in the ceiling, you know, things like that. Broken mirrors. Yeah. I get, I get it. If, if times are tough, you know, and things right. like, like that, but it's like, you know, paint is like, there's no excuse for that. Just it's cheap. I mean, it's actually yeah. not cheap anymore, but you can get a gallon. It's going to last you to touch up forever. Yeah. So, all right, cool. So I know we've been going for, we're, yeah, uh, I got to pee again. All right. So let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, we take a break here for a second. Right, we're back. Act like we never left. All right, so let me know what you whatever you whatever. You, <laughs> what question? What question are you gonna ask? Do you want me to ask myself the question? No. <laughs> Do you want I'm me trying to start to talking. <laughs> Just say something. Uh, it was about the. Uh, no, I was gonna ask you which one. Which one of the questions did you? Oh, like. One. I like. Know, managing operating yeah that one for then, sure uh, i mean if you're getting questions about people with the leases and that how to coordinate that which i mean that's not what i do with my gym but i mean i, I kind of had to do i had to coordinate moving my gym out yeah building out another space then moving that gym into there and all my members a couple miles away so yeah those for those that are negotiating or trying to find a space to either purchase or lease. Yeah. My recommendation would be if you can buy it, buy it. That's what I tell buyers that are looking into buying a home. If you can buy a house right now and you can afford it and you qualify, buy it because the long-term real estate is always going to increase. You know, I bought my building for $550,000 I did put a million dollars into it in the remodel. So, you know, let's say it's, you know, 1.5 million is what I had into it. And the building is worth $3 million now, you know, it's 20 years later, but that has increased. Now, if I had rented it, I would have no equity. So if you can buy it, I would say buy it. But if you are negotiating a lease, some of the things you want to think about uh, when you're negotiating a lease is, one, how long, when people are looking at a property, they, they look at how long has it been on the market? So the longer something's been on the market, typically the more leverage you have to negotiate. So you can negotiate free rent or tenant improvement where, you know, the, the landlord or the owner is going to put money into your build out or credit towards it. So I have, I've rented out a number of spaces for uh, I had a women's only gym also in the early 2000s, upscale women's only spa and everything, estheticians. Um, so negotiate, that was actually the drawback to that business. It was the lease I had, it was too high for the, the, the potential gross income that we could generate with that business. It was just a little bit ahead of its time or it was in the wrong place. If that was in a location, location, not Ramona, a different location, that business would have probably done triple the business. So negotiating your lease, you want to obviously 
you know, get, getting that, um, that book, the financial side of fitness is a good start, but the numbers are a little dated. Um, but I can't tell you your, you know, dollar per square foot, which, you know, changes in different areas, but you typically can negotiate, um, free rent, which I would, I would shoot for, uh, if you're going to invest in a space, you want to at least have it for five years. And I would, I would request or put in that you want two five-year options after that, or maybe you do it longer term, but you know, a five-year lease with two five-year options to continue the lease is a good idea, especially building out a gym and you could do even longer, maybe seven years. What does that mean for those that don't know? What does a five-year option mean? So at the end of that five years, you have the first right of refusal to, to say, yeah, I'm going to keep, keep renting it rather than them renting it to somebody else and kicking you out. Right. You're so saying you I want have to have those options because if you do have to put in money or you do want to put money into the space, then you have the first right to say, I'm going to stay here. Yes. Or we're going to renegotiate at least before the, the landlord can say like, no, you can't, we're not going to renew this lease essentially. Correct. So that's, that's critical to have that. And for, and definitely don't do month to month. Cause I know some guys do do month to month or they have situations where they're at the mercy of the landlord being like, yeah, we're done. So you need, you need to move, which yeah, would be crazy. All that money you just invested is gone. And you have actually, to- a lot of times you have to return it to what's called a vanilla box. Like, you know, when you, when you leased this warehouse space, it was just a big warehouse and it didn't have any partitions, didn't have the rubber floor, didn't have the, like, you got to put it back most of the time. Yeah. Sometimes landlords will, if it's a benefit to them, they'll keep it, but they could tell you, put it back to a vanilla box. So, or they're taking it out of the deposit. Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely seen spaces where they've left rubber flooring and you know, that you're going to have to pay to clean it up. There's, you got to scrape that glue underneath, which is why one of the cons of rubber floor rolled rubber flooring versus like, let's say a tile or interlocking puzzle pieces, something like that. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, there's, there's different things that you have to consider, you know, whenever you're going into these leases, like, or if you find a space that has that flooring already down too, that mm-hmm. can be a huge benefit if that's still, atta- you know, flooring still intact, you know, which is in the cases, some cases it's, you know, substantially uh, savings in costs, you know, especially with like okay. mirrors and stuff already in space. Some places are like, you know, dance studios. I, I always encourage gym owners to, to find old gyms that may be Absolutely. available yeah. for release. You know, that's another strategy I think. Right. But, I really like the five-year option though. That's good. That's yeah, really smart. You want to do that. And you, depending on how long it's been vacant, you can then negotiate some free rent, which I would say you could negotiate uh, six months. Up. I've, what I've done in the past is, you know, y- you want to start with like the best scenario for you. And then they have the opportunity to say, oh, no, we, we would say we'll do this. But yeah. so go for six months. They don't go for six months, then, you know, five months. They don't go. So you can just keep working your way down. But hopefully you could get six months um, and then maybe you could get an allocation. And they'll actually, if the landlord really wants you in there and you're reputable, hopefully, yeah, they may put money, they may get, give you money to build it out. And they may want to use their guys to build it out and say, they're going to give you $50,000 towards building out the the bathroom. That's another thing with the gym is I wouldn't do a full on locker room. I would do four unisex bathrooms, just four of them, like line them up. That's the changing room. That's a bathroom and it's men or women, but it's just one bathroom, you know, just like what you have a little, whatever, 12 by 12 or 10 by 10. It's probably 10 by 10 space. I'd have like a ur- urinal, toilet, urinal, sink. toilet, sink, and you know, like a hook, that's it. bench maybe to put your stuff yep. down and do four of those. You know, we yeah. have a full on locker room, you know, lockers, uh, a bank of really nice. You're saying if lockers. you're doing like a smaller gym, like yeah. 2000 three, to 3000, yeah, you don't need a locker like room it. and yeah. you don't need showers. I, I would get rid of shower. Like people don't shower in public. Young people think it's so strange when old men are showering. <laughs> what is this guy naked? Like, well, it's the locker room. That's what yeah. we used to do. We used to have to do it at school. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to shower oh, before work all the time when I was in the Navy. Yeah. You know, so it was like either that, or I'm just not going to be able to work out and 
just yeah. be nasty all day, which is sometimes, sometimes I just wouldn't do. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I just didn't shower right? either. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't do that. But okay, back to the lease. So you could, you know, you could negotiate you know, if you're going to be ordering equipment, you want at least like a three month or maybe longer period where you're prepping, getting that space ready to go, get yeah. your business, like your business is the facility. So you've got a lot of stuff to think about the bathrooms, I mean, the flooring, the lighting, all of that more. I think, you know, point blank, if you're going to go new equipment, if you want new equipment in your space, you're going to more than likely have to wait six to eight weeks, no matter what, it doesn't matter who you go with. It could be mayhem, could be arsenal, could be whoever, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Because those, those manufacturers have to make the equipment too. It's not like, unless there's in stock stuff, but it's not going to be custom, you know, if you're right. going to try to Colors go for that be different. uniform look, or you go use the use route too, which is also a really good way to get your bank for, for your buck. You know, you can Absolutely. get a lot of good stuff for, you know, your dollar, which there's nothing wrong with that, but you do have to consider, you know, some of the stuff's going to have issues potentially, or it may not last you as long, which is, in, and, and then again, the uniformity, the aesthetics right. just depends on that look that you're going for the need as well. I think that's also very important. So one thing I was going to ask you is when you're going to go to rebuild this, you know, 12,000 square foot gym or, you know, that you did and you were like, okay, now I get to create my own space which is, is fun, you know, cause then you're oh, yeah. like, all right, so I'm going to put the equipment kind of wherever I want. Cause you know, you're, you're a pro. So you, ha you know, the best, you know, better probably than anybody else, like how a gym should be laid out, which is awesome. You know, for your gym. And like I said, I love going there cause it's looks so, so clean and well put together. So, yeah. Well, thank you. You know, like, what was your mindset putting everything? Well, it all? so at that point, you know, I had worked in the gym business since I was 16 and so I'm 21, 22, actually at that point I was 23 or four. Um, so, you know, I'd been in the business for eight years. Um, I'll be honest. I, I mean, I paid a designer to design the whole, cause I had to, I mean, ground up, I left one wall. It was a remodel, but really it wasn't. But in San Diego, if you leave, if I, at the point, if I left up the rear wall and like 20 feet of the side walls, which is a two story building. So, uh, and half of the roof, then it was a remodel, which wow. made it less fees. It still was a lot in fees to the County. Uh, but I didn't have to pay like, you know, schools and parks and that those types of fees that go on top of that, just the permit fees. So, um, what was the question? Oh, laying it out. So I paid, yeah. you know, I paid a designer. There was a designer at, at the time that was really popular. I mean, he sounds like a designer. His name was Fabiano Designs. <laughs> Fabiano. <laughs> I don't know if he's still in the business, but sure. back in the day, like he designed beautiful gems, really, really like beyond, you know, they'd have yeah. bars in them and fireplaces and all wow. kinds of stuff like that. So like I said, I wanted to be more of an upscale. So there was another lady, um, I can't remember her name, but she did gyms and she was out of Santa Fe, New Mexico and did a number of gold's gyms and powerhouse gyms. And so I, love it. Yeah. I paid her. And so she laid it out. I would do it different now, but back in 2000, it's just like homes. People want homes that are like open. Everything's open. One big, great room. Right. And the same was, uh, you know, back in the early 2000s, people, the homes weren't built like that. Got so it. now, you know, Jim's more open, big warehouse type space. It just became more popular. Well, mine was more kind of cut up in more like intimate settings, like the offices and the massage rooms and spa rooms and that kind of thing. We still offer childcare. Um, so wow. I have all of those things still, but I, I changed things up a bit and, um, uh, mixed it up and tried to make more open space for the free weight area. And that was the other thing is free weights weren't as popular when I bought this gym. I mean, they were, but they weren't the main focus of gyms. You know, it was machines and cardio and, yeah. and step aerobics kind of stuff. So we've had to modify it over the years. Um, so I think, you know, going, I mean, I hate to say it, but Pinterest, you go onto Pinterest and get Absolutely. some great ideas. Although the ideas can end up costing you more money because you see this and you're like, Oh, I just have to have it that way. Yeah. And so it starts to cost. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, construction and uh, permits alone is just insane. 
I mean, I'm curious to know with Fabio and, and the other lady that you were using, did they also talk to the contractor when they're designing the spaces to coordinate the costs or like how, cause if you, you know, can do it that way, um, I owner built the gym and I've owner built some home residences, but, uh, yeah, you could have your designer and your architect and engineer talk with your contractor and there is a, a way to build things that is more efficient. And, you know, someone that comes up with the idea and the design doesn't necessarily know how it's built. That has to then go to exactly. a structural engineer and the structural engineer actually shows you like the contractor, this is how it's built. And here's all the, you know, cut sheets and pages on how to do that. But um, so, yeah, you do have to be careful design and, and cost don't always go hand in hand. So you want to build, uh, you know, what's the word, you know, cost effectively or, uh, something engineers. So I can't remember what it's like architectural said. engineers. No, structural. just, uh, <laughs> not economy engineer it, but value engineer oh, it. Gosh, <laughs> got it. is the phrase you want to value engineer it. Understood. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you kind of built, you're saying you, you built it yourself, the, the renovations. I, are, yes. Like, so unfortunately I hired a contractor. Actually, it's crazy. I first hired my father-in-law who had been in the business, but it just, when we went to demo the space, we did it a little early and it, it got us in what's called code enforcement. Like that's not, it doesn't sound very pleasant to be in code enforcement with the County. So it delayed the progress and we basically were on hold for over a year. It was like torn down just on hold because the permit process took way longer. So you got to, you got to plan for that. It's going to take longer than you think. And it's going to cost a lot more. So I had to end up letting my father-in-law go. I said, yeah, you're going to have to move on to your next job because we're kind of stuck here and we have to get this got finished. It. I hired another guy and once it got framed, um, he, I, I was, going through the finances and I gave him access to what was called fund control and fund control is a third party that then you submit a voucher. Uh, you basically write like a fake check from fund control to the contractor. The contractor takes that voucher or fake check back to them and submits their, like the work that they did and then gets paid. So it's like a third party to control the cash and control the flow of the money. Yeah, escrow and account. account. Basically, yeah, yeah, like an escrow. Exactly. Gotcha. So I went to pay the plumber and there was no money left in the plumbing line item for rough plumbing. And so I tracked it down and found that the contractor took the money from the rough plumbing and paid the framing, his framing crew. Now, maybe he could do that in his own business with his own money, but this was my money. Well, it was the bank's money, but it was right. my money. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't know where it was and it was with him because he signed it. So I fired him on the spot. I'm like, you can't do that. This is not your money. You can't, you know, float one line item to pay another. That's yeah. not allowed and we're done. So I then picked up the ball and, you know, kept finishing it on my own. So basically as an owner builder, you're coordinating the subcontractors. So from that point, rough plumbing uh, was done or, um, and then rough framing was done. The roof was not on yet. So I had to get the roof on and then I had to, you know, finish it out with the electrician and then all the finishes and all of that. So just coordinating it and actually doing some of the work. I think I did a lot of the tile work. It's beautiful. Yeah. It, it turned out it's, it needs, you know, a little updating here and there, but yeah. So you can try to coordinate on your own. A general contractor is you're going to pay them a fee and they're going to coordinate all of that for you. But I mean, all of that hard work that you did then is now translated into the equity that you owe exactly you have right. into the, the property now. Right. Which I mean, how much would you say that time is how many, right. you know, the, yeah. the, it's, it's the call, like the ROI, you know, it's yeah. like uh, hundreds couple hundred thousand dollars worth of that yeah. coordinating that. Now that's not for everyone because that, what that does is now it takes you away from operating your business. Yep. And, and you know, when we we're off camera, you asked me a question about, you know, how to manage and operate when I first got started in the business. Yep. Number one 
was finding a mentor, which was Thomas Plummer and his books really. And then I went right. to seminars. You know, he doesn't do these seminars anymore. My sister and I have thought about like, like picking up the ball where he left off and offering these seminars on do it the gym business and how to operate. Do it. But systems, you've got to have systems in place. And you got to have like a playbook for all of these systems and QR, quick, not QR codes, quick reference guides that are just like a synopsis, like a little paragraph, like this is the procedure when you add somebody to the database, or this is the procedure when, you know, somebody signs up and you schedule them for their first coaching session. Like we just have all these systems in place. And what happens though, is over time, you know, as staff changes, like you got to fall back on the system. You can't just fall back on one person remembering how to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So you got to have a like a playbook of how it's all done. So I actually have how to answer the phone. I have a whole playbook guide. It's actually on DVD from Thomas Plummer that is like you answer the phone by the third ring. You can't let that phone ring longer than three times. You got to answer that phone and how you greet the customer on the phone and how you sound. Yeah. All of that matters. The, f- the phone is so important, or it could be a text message nowadays. Some people right. don't even want to call, or it could be an online lead coming to you. But you want to get them preferably where you're speaking to them on the phone. And then the only goal of someone calling your business is that you schedule an appointment. You're never trying to sell them over the phone. You're not going to tell them a laundry list of all the things that you have at your gym. You're going to talk about them. What, you know, what, what encouraged you to call today? What was your, your main goal for calling today? Well, I just want to get prices. Usually that's what someone says. It's like, well, okay, we absolutely. I'll for sure give you the prices. You know, we're around $35 a month, but what is your main goal for maybe coming into the gym? What was your idea? What did you yeah. want to accomplish by working out? You know, you got to get to what their why is. And then, then you build that rapport over the phone and then you're going to schedule them an appointment to, to meet with you don't, you don't need to call them salespeople or trainer, just, you know, trainer. Yeah. You know, would would you like to come in tomorrow or the yeah. next day morning or afternoon four o'clock or five o'clock? This is called alternate choice. You're guiding the conversation by giving them two choices that they can choose from. And that's all part of a system process of this is how you operate your gym business. And that's super important because every time that f- every potential lead that calls you or potential member that calls you is worth somewhere around $500 in marketing. I mean, could be a little bit more, a little bit less, but that member could be worth thousands of dollars over the next few years. I've had members pay me $15,000 a year to do their personal training for them, you know, in a group setting or one-on-one. So that one phone call is worth thousands of dollars. Yeah. So it's not just the gym membership, you know, it's the personal training, it's the cooler drinks, it's the smoothies, it's the tanning, it's all of that that adds up because I mean, it's, I mean, the, the dues base and the gym membership is critical, but it's all the other things. It's just like a gas station, you know, what makes them the money, the gas or the convenience store that's next to it. Yeah. I mean, it's a combination, but it's not really just the gas. I mean, that, that may, you know, pay the pay the, you know, base operating expense, but the profits all in the, the other profit centers. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of people don't realize that gyms and mo- most businesses are actually like many smaller businesses in one, you know? Oh, for sure. Like a yeah. gym is kind of like, can be multiple little ecosystems that live in our those NPCs, those profit centers that you were talking about earlier. Yes. And right. NPC. Yeah. Uh, NPC, and, multiple profit centers. NPC, sorry. Yeah. The multiple profit centers, which is, you know, we have something that we, that we've said, like I've said on camera, that gyms can have anywhere from nine to like 15 different streams of income. That's right. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And if you're smart in your business plan, you, you incorporate some of those in ways that make sense that you can maybe spend maybe, you know, 10 to 15,000 extra dollars or save that much extra so that you can have a smoothie bar or, or you can have the money to pull permits to, mm-hmm. to build out a shower or locker room, whatever the case right, may right. be. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I just think it's awesome that, you know, you're, yeah, that's, it's a lot of, a lot of, 
probably, you know, entrepreneurs that want to start a gym, they're just thinking about the, the, the membership, but, and maybe personal training. Cause those are, pretty, there's, you know, there's also like no information out there on this stuff. Like yeah, nobody's, nobody's talking about this not, stuff. Not really anymore, but I will say Thomas Plummer, dig up some of his stuff. Um, you know, I, I love, I love coaching people in business. Like I have my real estate brokerage and, um, I love coaching these new agents. I have a, a brand new agent. He's 18 years old. He just got his real estate license, love just it. finished high school. He's got his license. So he's coming on board and it's so much fun to me because all of the same business practices translate no matter what the business is. And, you know, it, it, you know, it starts with what is your unique selling proposition? What is unique about your business that you're doing or your service or what, what sets you apart? Yeah. And then, you know, there's this acronym with them. What's in it for me as the customer, what's in it for the customer? Why, why should they choose you over the competitor? Uh, I mean, there's just, there's just so much to it, but in terms of the gym business, you got to have a system to fall back on. Yeah. Um, you got to know what your unique selling proposition is, you know, are you hardcore bodybuilding gym or you're, you're the local hometown, you know, homegrown gym, which has really been our thing for many years. Now we're, we're moving more into the serious gym environment or like before I was more of a upscale adult gym, which is a good model, a very good model to run, especially if you have trainers as employees, yeah. uh, because then you can control the level of service. You can charge a higher dollar amount per personal training session. Um, so, I mean, all of that adds up to like, you know, where, what are you going to end up making? And s some people may not know, like, what can a gym profit or what can a business profit? You know, what is a good profit margin? Like after you have paid everything and you're down to the bottom line, what percentage could you potentially make? And I've found that 10 to 20% in a business like a gym business is pretty dang good, you know, yeah. somewhere between 10. So if your business now that's our, that's with paying, paying employees and paying a manager, then after that's all done and you've paid everything before taxes. So you say your gym business makes a million dollars a year. If you're going to make 10%, you're going to make a hundred thousand dollars a year in profit. I could say 10% on the low side, but you know, unfortunately in California, everything really, really goes up in, you know, your minimum wage and your electricity bills. It's ridiculous here in San Diego. So let's say 10% here in San Diego, but maybe you're somewhere else and you can make 20%. So yeah. you're making $200,000 on that million. Um, so, you know, that's the potential. So keeping that in mind when you're planning your business, like that's what you could potentially profit easily. I think gyms, yeah. like I said, nine to 12, 15 different streams of revenue that if done properly can be leveraged as nine different businesses. Absolutely. But I think people have to, here's the way I, I, I think about it. I approach business now as kind of like, systems, how you said in, well, I replaced the word systems with tech stack, like a technology, like a stack of technology that works together in a way that I can implore people to learn and understand those different technologies. And they can in, in turn talk to each other in, in a way, you know? So like, uh, when I say that is like, emails are connected to, you know, leads and the leads have, you know, information that live inside of, you know, it's basically a CRM, Right. That's connected to, you know, all of your, your phone system is integrated with your, you know, email marketing and things all like all of that things. But then there's the operational side too, where you have phone scripts, you know, who, who's answering. That's like an operational thing, which is not a tech thing. There's, there is that, that, you know, true. That, Absolutely. And then, and then lastly, there's a leadership component too, where you have to be a leader to, t to be able to manage a team of individuals, whether you like it or not as a gym owner, right. you know, right. If you're going to grow your gym business, then you have to be able to accept that you're going to have to, you know, manage a schedule and hold people accountable when they don't clean up the way that you want it to be cleaned up or uphold the standards that you want to keep in your gym. That's right. You know, and, that's right. And you that's, gotta, that's a tough part of the business too, is, um, you know, coaching your staff to do it the way that you want it done. And that yeah. that's, 
holding them accountable. That's, that's a good one, you know, and having a system of, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we didn't coach them well enough in the beginning, or maybe yeah. scratch that. Maybe you hired the wrong person, yeah. you know, and it, it's not even their fault. It, you just, it's our fault. We hired the wrong it person. It truly old, always <laughs> boils down to your own, like, you know, you as a business owner, it's always your fault for everything. But I, I think yeah. 99% of the time, yeah. I should say. It but. definitely can be. But if you've given this person m- plenty of opportunity to correct what they're doing, then, yeah. you know, then you got to, you got a verbal and then you got to write them up and then, okay, we do this again. And you're just telling me that maybe this isn't the right position for yeah. you. So yeah, it's just yeah. like raising children. It's the same thing. <laughs> right. You got to set some structure and some boundaries yeah. and they have to know, but, how, you know, you, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is you have to create structure. Like people, you can't like be mad at somebody when you didn't really set the bar for them, you know, or you didn't like make it easy for them to follow or understand. Right. So right. that's kind of, that's kind of where you have to be like, all right, here's the standard, you know, and be able to quantify it. Right. Right. So yeah. It's yeah. interesting. So, you know, what, uh, what kind of technology you guys use? That's I good. Saw. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Cause I was like, Oh wait, that was maybe a topic we could t- chat about was, um, software that you use, um, you know, website, yep. um, a big one. CRM, a huge one. email marketing apps. So, uh, number one, which they're the big dog in the business is ABC financial. They're the biggest, uh, membership billing company. Although things have become more fragmented over the last many years, yeah. there's a company called ASF. And then also Mind Body Online. I've heard Mind of those. Body. So yeah. we use ABC Financial to bill our regular memberships on a monthly basis, um, and then also the point of sale software that's all through ABC Financial. Got it. And then ABC Financial also owns the CRM company called Jim Sales. It Got was it. started separately, but it's been combined now to. I don't even know. It's called ABC. It's called something else, but ABC Financial will get you there. Um, yeah. so Jim sales is a CRM, a customer relationship management software, yep. which helps you follow up with your leads. Those are your potential leads that turn into members. And then those members now are leads for your personal training or for your massage or your tanning. And those are like the funnels you can put them in. So Jim sales is a great software that I really like. Um, you, we have an iPad at the front counter and that's how people sign in. Every single person that looks at the gym is going to sign in on their guest register. And on, nice. you know, that's how I would, I would call it. Yeah. And we used to have a wedding back, you know, before iPads, we had like a, a wedding guest register, <laughs> like a real nice sign white in. book. Yeah. Let me have you sign in on our guest register. Uh, and we don't give them the option. You're going to come into the, this business. It's a private business. It's a private right. gym. You gotta follow You're going to yeah. you sign in. So I hand it to them. Let me go ahead and have you sign in on the guest register. And they do that. And there's a spot, you know, they're just interested in checking out the gym or they do want to sign up. If they want to sign up, then it takes them right to sign up right there. Yeah. But otherwise we're going to ask them some questions. And so gym sales handles that. And then that automatically puts them into ABC financial. So if they do sign up, there are all their info is already in there and they can just sign up right on the iPad if they want yep. after a tour, it should have a good tour that, you know, goes over what their goals are and what they're, you know, what they would like to accomplish in the next, whatever, what their motivation level is, uh, we, all of that. We had a, a gym make it mandatory that they watched a video that they made. Oh, in their like sign up process. It was like a the potential member. Uh, to watch the no, no. I think it was when you were signing up. When, no, oh. when you were signing up to be a member, there was like a like a minute and a half long video. That's great. That's and a great it, idea. It was like, and, and you can't like skip it. They were just like, yeah, we have to. You have because I, I think it was like the re re racking the weight policy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and it's, it was like you're watching this video now, nice. and so you know you're acknowledging that you watched this video yes. by checking this button. Right. That's and, great. I thought it was good. To, good idea. I don't know if if, if other gym owners will think that. Well, we that's have good, um, an app that is, when someone signs up for regular, you know, monthly dues membership, they get access to our Trainerize. It's our branded own branded Trainerize app. If you go to the the app store, you go to the gym Ramona. You could download it, but if you don't have a membership at our gym, it won't work. Mm. Um, so as soon as you get a membership, you get full access to that app, which we can communicate to the members. They can track their workouts. They can track their measurements. Their in-body scan will upload to that. 
Um, it's a great software for our personal trainers to use, but the member can use it themselves and track their workouts. And then as soon as they download that, the first thing comes up is actually a video for me. It just thanks them for becoming a member and yeah. how to use the app. Um, so that's a great tool. Um, so, and that is again, through trainer eyes. So you have ABC financial gym sales, trainer eyes for our personal training. We still use mind body online to do their scheduling and to bill for personal training. Although you don't have to, you can use ABC financial. And then, um, what else is there? The, the website is 97 display. They do a lot of gyms and martial arts studios. Nice. And so you can totally customize a website and then obviously, you know, your Facebook and Instagram pages and whatever other social media you want to do. I think it's dependent on your town. We are pretty big in the town of Ramona with Facebook. Yeah. Very popular. Um, I know it's kind of strange how certain social media is popular in certain areas. So yeah. social media, I mean, uh, Facebook and Instagram are pretty, pretty big. And the Jim Ramona is our Facebook and Instagram. Um, anything else? You guys doing um, Facebook ads at all or like Google ads? Yeah, we do some. <clears throat> we do some for sure. I yeah. mean, I do a ton, ton in my real estate business. Um, you know, you've got your different types of marketing. I still believe even, even in the gym business, I, I do send out in any new uh, homeowner to Ramona. They'll get a trial membership to my gym. And, but anybody can do that. You don't have to be a realtor to be able to get that list. You can, everybody can get that. That's slick. I didn't, that's pretty cool. And yeah. And I also have an option that anybody that goes to my website and it could be Ramona fitness or my homes, Ramona.com within 24 hours, they will be mailed a postcard and it's automated. So that's a pretty cool tool. And then through this postcard company, they have a product called everywhere, small business, so if you send a postcard to that person's house, they will also get a Google, YouTube, and Facebook ad. Uh, and it can be a geofenced ad. Like if they're within the radius of five miles, they're going to get an ad on their phone at, wow. at some point in that time frame. So crazy. like you were saying, I mean, there's these tech stacks and all amazing technology that you can use nowadays yeah. that that you know weren't even around when I bought it's, the gym. The internet had just started. Yeah. <laughs> four years earlier. So yeah, there's, there's all kinds of yeah. technology, but I think it's important to have a great billing company. Um, it's kind of tough though, nowadays where these, some of these businesses were very personal and people were here in the U S where they've right. now out offshored it. And they've got someone in Malaysia or someone in Europe or wherever Philippines, which nothing against that, but it, it does throw people off sometimes, you know, if somebody's oh. calling you and they're letting you know your, your credit card has expired and they've got a strong accent from another country that can be uncomfortable for people, but that's where the app comes in. And it also let people update their credit card and their billing on the app. Got it. But yeah, if you're in, in the, in the gym business, those are the big ones that I like to use, but yep. there's lots of companies out there. Hundreds. Yeah. I mean, I've, we've heard of a bunch too that, you know, uh, gym master is one that I've personally looked into that seemed half decent, you know, um, they're not sponsoring this video. None of these companies are sponsoring, <laughs> None of them are sponsoring us, <laughs> uh, but you know, maybe, maybe there is a gym software company that wants to sponsor this video. Yeah. Uh, reach out to us. Yeah, so cough, check it out. Cough, cough. Uh, but yeah, no, this, uh, this has been great. This yeah. has been, this is, this is so, this is going to be like, I think people will, will listen to this and find well, something so. <laughs> that they can walk away with. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for having me. And it's kind of crazy that I think when we first met was like really literally right after you started the business. And yeah, I did not know that early on. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so. You will. I love the brand too. I love this brand and Thank just you. Jim bros brand, but the mayhem strength logo, very cool. I mean, the equipment is fantastic. I have, I don't know, six or seven pieces. I got dumbbells from you guys. Love the, are they urethane color coated yep. dumbbells are amazing. Very solid. Um, the racks, I mean, the fixed barbells, all, all of it, really good quality equipment. Um, I mean, military retired military. Uh, no, I was, I was, Still? Not well, yet. No, I know. I was just six years and I got out. I, I, I got like, I don't, I'm just, I, I don't think that's retired. Were, were you in the military? I was. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you're not in the military. No, I call that retired. I see what military. you're saying. 
Uh, so retired military owned, vet, yeah. military yeah, started, founded. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was oh, active duty. Vet. Yeah. I was active duty when I started. So, I mean, that's an awesome thing. Uh, patriotism of it. And, you know, it's an amazing thing to be in the United States of America. And if you have a dream and you, you know, have some guts and you have some discipline and hard work, you can make anything happen. Absolutely. And whoever says that, you know, there's no opportunity, like why are people busting down the doors to get into this country? It's because you can come from a broken home. You can come from North Carolina. You can come from wherever and, and start your vision and start your dream. It may not be a success, but you nope. can give it a shot. <laughs> it's not going to be easy. No, not at all. But I truly believe that you, that society will give you back whatever you put back into it in value as a business, right? Like I think businesses are truly just our ways of giving value to society. And then society evaluates what it is that we're offering and tells us if it's good or not, you know, free market capitalism. Exactly. Right there. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. um, geez, man, thank you so much for real. It's Absolutely. been a, it's been an honor. Let's do it again yeah, soon. For and, sure. um, you know, next time we'll get a lift in the showroom. It'll be, it'll be a good one. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, social media links to our socials, uh, Peter's okay, socials. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, you're going to put them on. Yeah. We'll put them in the description, but if you want to go ahead and say it audio, uh, audibly, yeah, that's that'd be great. Be great. If you want to check out, uh, the Jim Ramona on Facebook or, uh, Instagram, or Peter St. Nicholas underscore realtor. If you're looking to buy a home or negotiate a lease on a gym or buy a gym, I'd be happy to help you with it. Let's go guys. Episode number nine. Hope you guys liked it. Subscribe, hit the bell notification. So you guys don't miss out on the next one. We're going to be giving you guys content and value just like this one. Peace.